Martin, can you tell us where we are now? Hi, Annette. We are in Sweden, in the city of Gothenburg, where Wireless Car is headquartered. But we are also located in the United States, China, Japan, India and Brazil, working with our customers around the globe. But here is where the Wireless Car story began, last millennium in 1999. We are located in the harbour of Gothenburg, a place that combines the history of a large shipyard industry and the first Volvo plant. You might know that Wireless Car is part of the Volvo Group. A place full of history, but a place dedicated as well to the future, with technology research, universities, science park and more. A place similar to Wireless Car, with solid foundations, understanding that the world is changing and that the visionary mindset and innovation are key to success. What has changed since Wireless Car was established? Well, security and safety was the starting point for services as tracking, breakdown calls and emergency calls. But today, we moved into a connected society area. Your vehicle, your home, mobile phone and more are or will be connected and provide services in a collaborative system. Hmm. So what is the impact? Quantitatively, we have to handle more and more information as possibilities and services grow and the industry faces the big data challenges. On the other hand, qualitatively, the information we manage is now linked personally. Thus, security and integrity is key to provide services that will keep people connected and, at the same time, protected. You want to be connected to serve your needs, not to be hacked or see your personal information spread to the world. Okay, so how does Wireless Car manage these two aspects? The amount of information and, at the same time, the security to handle individual protection? Yeah. This is of course a large topic and very much an end-to-end -end question, but today we will focus on the infrastructure and data center capabilities. Being part of the Volvo Group enables us to offer our customers proven and highly secure data center that is managed by Volvo IT to serve the Volvo Group and their external customers. When large amounts of information are transferred and stored, availability and stability becomes increasingly important. At the same time, you might know that Sweden is a best-in-class country when it comes to environmental protection. And this is a strong value that Volvo Group is focusing on as well. We do believe that we can convey this value in our daily work at Wireless Car. And the data center we use is one of the greenest data centers available. As one example, we're using seawater as the major cooling mechanism and using nothing but green energy to power the center. We actually improve the sensitive marine life in the bay outside the location. Interesting. So how can we learn more about this data center? Safety and security regulations as well as precautions taken at such an important place are very rigorous as you can imagine. Therefore, only very few people are allowed to get into the data center. Instead, we have created a movie to give you the possibility to take a tour behind the scenes and to learn more about the environmentally friendly benefits provided to our customers worldwide. Great. So let's check that. Sure. Let's go. This beautiful rocky shoreline is one of the most geologically as well as politically stable places in the world. It's spared from violent seismic activity, tornadoes and tsunamis, as well as political turbulence. Ever since the Vikings roamed the high seas, this has been a node for seafarers on their trade routes around the world. But with its strategic position, this place is not only good for sea transport. Today, this is also harbour to another kind of traffic the fastest there is. This is where Volvo IT's data centre and its fibre optic network ties the globe together at the speed of light. I guess you could say we're standing on the tip of an iceberg because underneath us here, barely visible, encased in solid rock, is the data centre. Hello Vanessa, you're going to be our guide here today, aren't you? Yes. Well, let's start with what's right here underneath us, because this hall is ISO 14000 certified. That's right. This building was constructed with the surrounding area in mind. It's a bird reserve here. Next to us, we have the Natura 2000 area. It requires very high standards when it comes to green IT. This hall hosts hundreds of servers running thousands of applications. Uh, it stores and transfers enormous amounts of data. Mm -hmm. How do you power such a place? The electricity we use comes from green power sources. The UPS system that kicks in if there is power failure is battery free. 
and the backup generators run on eco-par fuel. Cooling is very important when it comes to a data center that you consume a lot of power or they use a lot of power. What we do is that we use seawater and heat exchangers. This system is both lean and efficient. One can say that the hall also has a positive effect on the surroundings. When cooling down the data center, fresh water is let out in this shallow bay. The shifting of the water has a positive effect on marine life. One can say that thanks to the data center, this bay is now alive. Please, let's go inside. So um, this is what the entrance looks like from the inside. Of course, uh, safety regulations are rigorous here. This is a place where only a chosen few get to see from the inside. It's a little bit noisy in here. I know, that's what the cooling system sounds like. Right. The hall is uh, modern, spacious, it's tailor-made for its purpose. Um, say, though, if I came in here, if I were to trip over a cable or unplug something, what would happen then? That's highly unlikely. Well, impossible. We strive to have continuous operation and availability. This data center has been in production since 2007 with no unplanned downtime whatsoever. Wow, impressive. Mm. But what if something were to go wrong? What, what would happen then? Then the traffic data instantly is shifted over to the backup hall. Right, so this data center is not just this building. No, no, no. Gothenburg data center consists of three halls. Let me show you. The Volvo IT data center must always ensure availability and stability. Our objective is to make sure that no matter what happens, data must never be lost. Let's look at the layout for power supply of the data center. There are two main power cables coming in from separate power grids. Two massive rotating flywheels that act as UPS can provide power as the generator starts up. Oh, that is of course two separate generators. And at the end of this chain, every individual server and crucial power consumer is connected to two alternative power supplies. This philosophy of redundancy applies to everything. To ensure the network, there are multiple WAM providers that connect to the building, even some extra providers that are not currently supplying us with any services. It also applies to the cooling systems and the inert gas fire extinguishing systems. There must always be at least one extra backup system for each backup system. This entire hall has got a backup. The data centre is not housed in just one building. It is a cluster of three separate halls that are situated a couple of kilometres apart. The buildings are connected by high capacity redundant networks. This main hall and the second hall are set up exactly the same. The second hall can take over instantly if needed, as it can mirror all applications and data. The third hall continuously backs up data from the other two. The services of the main data center are provided globally. To enable even higher communication speeds, there are two supporting data centers in Asia and North America, and a network of high security data rooms all over the globe. And all of this is under constant monitoring, both by personnel and automatic monitoring systems. So this is a monitoring room, is it? Yes. From here we have constant track of the status of all the halls. Besides a surveillance video of parameters, detectors keep tracks of all sorts of factors, like temperature, humidity, smoke and fire. There are a variety of parameters that can trigger warnings and alarms. In addition to automatic routines, the monitoring rooms are manned, so we can always take direct action if needed. Mm. So it's not just physical precautions that are taken, there's a strong emphasis on uh, prevention. Yes, we also monitor and evaluate the status of all servers, networks and applications. This means that we can not only see if there's something that's not working correctly, we can also proactively help our clients. Say a customer needs to look at an improved application as the rate of their transaction grows, then we will give a heads up on this long before the situation is critical. Okay, but uh, what happens if something does go wrong? What then? If it passes our grid, we have a 24-7 help desk to contact. However, we can automatically pick up and correct errors here before anyone else notices. Then it will just show in the log file. 
Vanessa, this is a beautiful place. Yes, as you can see, we're very proud to be here. Uh, it's still hard for me to grasp that uh, underneath us here, buried in the rock, uh, that thousands of applications are being run, that, that vehicles are quite literally being assembled, that uh, clothes, goods are being bought and sold, and transactions are being made in their millions, very quietly albeit, uh, transactions from all around the globe. Now all of this is absolutely critical to your customers, isn't it? But you don't look in the least bit worried. No, I'm not. There you go.